The views or opinions expressed in this video are solely my own and do not necessarily reflect those of any other person or company. Hello again good people. For those of you who've seen a previous video regarding the construction of my simulator, I must tell you now that I've been a bit slow in getting on with making the instrument panel. Life gets in the way and all that. However, I'm hoping my latest acquisition here will inspire me to get the tools out and perhaps finish the project. This piece of equipment is perhaps the last thing to finish off uh, the simulator, but for my birthday my wife asked what I wanted for a present and so I chose this. It's the Virtual Fly Compost, which will give me a magnetic compass that most, if not all, aircraft have either on top of the dashboard or suspended from the cockpit ceiling. I used to have a real magnetic compass in my old simulator, which I gave away many years ago. Of course, this was only for show. Uh, there was no way possible to make it actually work with the simulator. The Compos is not a true magnetic compass. There's no magnet inside. The dial is moved by a stepper motor, which is controlled by driver software connected to the simulator. The magnetic compass is also known as a wet compass or a whiskey compass. Why it's called this is attributed to the real one being filled with alcohol as a lubricant. And there are a few stories around of M and drinking this at some time or another. It sounds a bit stupid to me. It can't be true. The modern fluid is more akin to kerosene and is likely to poison you, or at least make you blind if you drink it. So, don't do that. Stick to a single malt. I should state now that I'm not being sponsored for this video. Virtual Fly has not sent me this unit for review, and I bought this with my own money. Well, my wife bought it with her money. I must admit, I'm not a fan of the name. Compost sounds a bit silly to me, as does other equipment in the Virtual Fly range, the Ruddo and the Yoko. I wonder why they didn't call this the Compo. Anyway, the quality is very good in the range. I have already have the Yoko, so I guess the silly names don't really matter. OK, let's uh, open it up and see what we have. It says, are you ready to virtual fly? <laughs> yes, I am. This is the warranty card with the product number on the back. It has a two year warranty, so I'd better keep the box just in case. This is the instruction sheet. I've already seen the instructions online, which have a little bit more information than this single sheet. Okay, a permanent ink pen. Here's a small hex key and these are a spare set of deviation cards. It looks well made, a metal body, deviation card on the front, a red lubber line behind the perspex and easy to read dial markings. I think it's the same shape as Cessna compasses that I've seen. It's quite heavy. You can use these magnets on the bottom to hold it to a metal plate on your dashboard or you can use that little hex key to take this bottom plate apart and hold the unit down with screws. On the back there's something that looks like a reset button but it's not. It's just a switch to turn the internal lights on and off. The light can also be controlled with the driver software, but more on that later. 
we have of course the USB lead. There's no driver software here, you have to download that from the Virtual Fly website. So let's do that now. This is the Virtual Fly website. To get the driver software, click on the Setup and Support tab. There's the driver software, the VF Hub. So the VF Hub is the interface between all Virtual Fly hardware and the simulator. You use the Hub to calibrate your device, access the manuals and any device updates. You do have to have the Hub running before you start the sim, but I suppose you can add it to the Windows Startup folder to run minimized automatically when you turn on the computer. So I click here to download the software, which is a setup file. So when it's downloaded, I'll run the setup and start the hub. So I've run the setup program and it's placed a start icon on the desktop. Here's the hub. As I say, you can start this automatically if you want by putting it in your Windows startup folder. As you can see, the hub controls all the Virtual Fly hardware. I have a Yoko, uh, but at the moment I've only got the compost connected. So I click on the settings button here. This shows the backlight control. If you have it on auto, uh, it'll come on when the sim is started. For my purposes, I'm going to keep it on all the time. One problem is that if you have the compost in front of your monitor, Without the compost backlight on, the bright screen drowns out the compost, making the dial difficult to see. This box shows the current angle the compost is showing. QC is quality control test, so I can press any of these buttons to ensure the compost points to the correct direction. This button takes you to the user manual on the web, which has a bit more information than the leaflet that came in the box. So when you first try the compost, you have to calibrate it. I've already done this uh, procedure, but it's quite simple to do. First step is to make sure the compost turns in the correct direction. Second step is to calibrate it to the north. You can move the dial with these buttons. The single arrow will move it an imperceptible one stepper motor point. The three arrows will move it 100 points or about 5 millimeters, quarter of an inch. You then save that step and move on to carry out the same thing for east, south and west. The last step is to calibrate the compost backlash. I'm not sure what this is about. Is this the wobble that you see in the real compass? The wording isn't clear, so I've left it on 40. So you finish the calibration, minimize the hub, remember that you have to keep it running, and then start the simulator. So. Here we are in the Cessna at uh, Winchester Municipal. What I'll do is centre the simulator compass so that you can compare this with the compost. So let's taxi down and you can see that the compost keeps up well with the sim.
As you can see, the Sim Compass swings as a real compass would, but the Compass can't do this because the dial is fixed to the stepper motor. take off quickly. <laughs> Sorry, that was rough because I can't reach the rudder pedals. The camera mount is in the way. Please don't judge me. I'll get a little height and uh, then set the autopilot. The heading is set north and the compass is following. Now I'll turn to the east. south Turn to the west. If you're wondering how I'm setting the heading, I'm using the X keys pad. Now you might be wondering why you need a whiskey compass in the cockpit when you have other easier to use instruments to show your direction. Well, the obvious reason is that it doesn't rely on power or being connected to anything else. It's a true standalone instrument. If everything fails on the instrument panel, then you should stare at your whiskey compass and perhaps pray. It's also one of the instruments that the FAA demand to be included as the basic minimum in any cockpit. 
I believe the only aircraft that doesn't have a magnetic compass is the Dreamliner. Just to prove that the compost turns in the other direction, we'll now go to 220. One of my complaints with the compost, and I know it's only a small niggle, is that from my eye line, it can be difficult to see the numbers on the dial. They're set a little too high, which means I have to duck my head to see it properly. That really is a small point though, and overall I'm very pleased with the compost. All I have to do now is get on with building the instrument panel so I can proudly place the compost on the top. So, with that promise to get on with it, I will see you all very soon. Bye bye.